Hey everyone, this is John Moran. Today we're going to be talking about demand gen campaigns and why they might look like they're doing better than they actually are. Always verify things with data. That's what this is going to teach us. So we have a campaign that has been running for a little over three weeks with the client now, and it's a demand gen campaign here. Now we spent uh, in the last 30 days, since it hasn't been running the full time, but we spent $30,000 since August 28th and it's now September 18th. So about 20 days spending 30 grand, uh, we've actually seen some pretty massive changes in the account that looked good initially, but then kind of fell apart as soon as you start to dig a little bit deeper. So I'll share with you the top line results. Costs peaked um, on August 24th at 33K, again at uh, September 14th at 35K. So pretty much you know the same cost, give or take like 2K. But conversions peaked at 137 and then peaked at 377. So that's a massive increase in conversions. And it all has to do with this new demand gen campaign. This demand gen campaign is all of a sudden seeing 1,500 conversions. It's our, it's our biggest uh, conversion generator in the account, or so we thought. Let's split it in half and actually kind of dive in. Let's take a look a little bit closer as to what we're seeing. So looking at the last 14 days compared to the previous 14 days, you can see the cost went up 9.48%, but the conversions and the conversion by conversion time are both up 80% or more. So that's a massive increase for same cost and all of a sudden being able to get, uh, go from you know 1,400 conversions, adding 1,100 to it to 2,500. That is huge. Why? Demand gen. Demand gen shows that it went from 205 to 1334. That's a big increase. That's a 550% increase with only a 52% increase in cost. So when usually when things are too good to be true in Google Ads, most likely is. So we started to dig a little bit deeper. We started to look at the conversion actions. We see that the demand gen has that info kit request all of a sudden spike up like crazy. And so we looked and said, well, where are these coming from? We see that the uh, info kit request here went from 744 up to 1400. That's a 90% increase. That's amazing. We should see some, some good qualified leads from that. Well, we didn't. We actually saw less by time, a little bit more by click. So I actually lost 7% uh here and i gained one percent that's that's odd qualified leads means that this people have been contacted and they are they're interested now you can say conversion delay but that's not really necessarily a thing in the last 14 days compared to the previous 14 days is only down seven if we had 90 percent more leads i should have more qualified leads where are they and that's what i'm saying we're importing these back in i was like what where would they be going if we're importing these these leads back in? i should see a higher volume and that's when we started to dig into what type of conversions it was. When you look at ad event type, we can see that the demand gen has an engaged view conversion that has spiked up to a thousand more than it did the previous two weeks. Went from 12, 205 to 1334. Now, yes, clicks started to get started to increase, which is good. Now, relevant to the cost, it's about average. But when you're about for all of the other campaign types. But when you look at the actual engage view conversion, that went up 847%. That's why these people aren't in our system. They're not newer people. They're just people that were going to be converting anyway. That simply were shown an ad. And the way you identify that is by looking at the format video only. We'll actually tell you that demand gen here, for example, has 1,325 conversions in skippable in stream. So YouTube, we see this with YouTube quite often, where if you're not removing the warm traffic, when you're not excluding 90 days worth of website visitors or, or more if you want to, but when you don't exclude the website visitors, the YouTube portion of any campaign type, whether it be Demand Gen, PMAX, or YouTube, will start to get a crazy amount of engaged view conversions to people who are already going to convert. Now, one of the reasons why this is going to happen inside of Demand Gen is because in our YouTube campaigns, it stayed healthy because we're hitting a target CPA. So target CPA has kept it from spiking up, but with maximized conversions, it doesn't matter where it's going to attribute these. It's going to find them anywhere it can. And so it's found a bunch of warm audiences that it gets to take all of the engaged view, uh, engaged view attribution for. Now, that's what's interesting here is we didn't actually see any new traffic to the site. We didn't, or a little bit new, but not as much, not not you know, 550% more leads attributed. They didn't have UTM parameters either. We saw an increase in UTM parameters, but where we didn't actually see the people filling out the form with the UTM parameter of demand gen means that this is the reason why. We didn't really have much of an increase in leads. We didn't have much of an increase in the UTMs attributed to demand gen, but Google was saying, hey, it's doing 550% better this last two weeks than the previous two weeks. So that was verified by by CRM data, but also verified that when you look at that conversion action, 
the conversion action of these uh, info kit requests here didn't match the qualified leads that we had. They were the same leads. Now, the other part you can say, well, is creating demand. Okay. So when we're looking at the brand campaign, I am vastly outspending what I can actually attribute as a, as a, as a daily ad spend. What that means, if I look at the last seven days for a quick example, a nice segment by time and by day, we have some slight ads limited by policy. That's not the reason, only one out of 96, but I'm trying to spend $45,000 a day with manual CPC and I'm getting a click share of 94.24. I am capturing literally every single person that would ever Google our brand ever. And I can only spend about 14 to $15,000 per day. Okay. So if we're looking at, I am spending everything I possibly can over the last 14 days compared to the previous 14 days with these, you know, a thousand new people, you know, are interested in our, in our info quit kit. I should see more branded, more branded search, more branded leads. I'm, I'm not. I'm actually seeing 14% less inbound branded searches. So or inbound branded conversions. So it's not necessarily generating demand. I'm still capturing the same amount of click share as well. So my cost per conversion has spiked up a bit. My cost has stayed about the same. My conversions are dropping, but that's also due to those split attributions. So because Google can split attribution with things, I'm seeing click engage conversions go down. My YouTube campaigns are also suffering the same fate though. So when you see our YouTube campaign here, uh, let's do video, some campaigns are actually losing performance and they're losing performance over a longer period of time. So that's what's kind of crazy is some some are going from 77 down to 42. This one stayed about the same. This new one here is, is you know, can't be attributed to that. But then our main campaign is also losing. So my main campaign is losing, losing, stay the same. This one's new. So we're seeing less YouTube. We're seeing about 10 to 50% less YouTube, which is equating to 10 to 15% 10 less inbound branded search because we've been running YouTube for a long time. The only outlier is this demand gen, but demand gen is now producing 550% more leads. What ends up happening, and one of the reasons why we actually don't even charge this client for their branded ad spend is because this client has a lot of additional traffic. They have traffic from major news networks, major influencers. I mean, national TV brand, um, you know, announce, uh, not announcers, but like people with their own talk shows. They are, are influencers for this brand. This brand is has a great, great, great um, organic traffic. We are specifically targeting very cold traffic demand gen is targeting warmer traffic and simply inserting itself into the conversion path, showing an ad to a person that is ending up converting within the same three days that that campaign type is going to be tracking an engaged view conversion, counting it its own, spiking spend, getting a thousand more conversions, but our brand is actually suffering. Our brand search is actually suffering conversions because of it. So is it generating demand or is it attributing more existing demand to itself? That's the question. We're going to be going through a top line study to see how much actual more new leads we got that was qualified. Cause right now it is the exact same with a 80% increase in overall account growth. Our actual leads amount are the same and our brand campaign is actually having less you know, generated demand. <laughs> so uh, this is John Rand. We're going to have more for you, but I wanted to give you this quick tip just to say, investigate a little further, because if I saw my cost per conversion be cut in half and get 80 and 85% more conversions after running demand gen, you could be really inclined just to triple or double that ad spend, you know, be, because this looks amazing. We've never seen this before. Always dig a little bit deeper. Always understand your conversion path. Always measure your know, NCAC. Those will protect you. Make sure you triangulate your, your metrics that you see inside of Google ads, because sometimes it's just Google getting better at attribution and you'll be the one to lose if you base your long-term metrics off of Google's KPIs. Thank you so much. Bye. Time has come. If you're tired of being a solo combatant in the battle against the evil empire that is Google, if you're tired of being lied to, given tools that don't work and recommendations that put you at a disadvantage, if you're tired of desperately trying to claw your way back to where you used to be only to see yourself slip down again, 